please welcome to everyone. the college of complexes my name is tim <laughs> i'd like to welcome all of you to the college tonight the college of complexes consists of the following format first we have a brief announcements period second we then have a our our speak our speaker will then speak up to about an hour then we'll have a question and answer period where we ask questions and not do commentaries because at the end you'll have a chance to, in a certain specified amount of time to give you rebuttals okay charlie if you're ready with the announcements uh, let's go ahead let's introduce our let's introduce our speakers tonight and uh the screen is yours and uh introduce yourselves and uh, let's get moving here so uh please take it away thank you well i'm candace davis i'm one of the co-leaders of truth brigade illinois I am um, part of Indivisible Evanston, uh, which is a part of an Indivisible group we'll talk about in a second. And I'm a retired uh, attorney turned activist uh, working with Indivisible Evanston and Indivisible Illinois. Etta? Hi, I'm Etta Worthington. I live in Forest Park, Illinois. And uh, I've done a number of things in my life, but I've been a writer, a filmmaker, um, a professor, and I'm right at this point not doing any of those things and I've been focusing on activism since uh, late 2016. Um, but um, I've really gotten interested in sharing the truth. Right. And I am going to share our slides with you. Um, let me share the screen. Hold on. There we go. Can you see that okay? Yeah. yeah. Yes, we can see it fine. Good. So who are we? We just started to tell you about that. We're the two co-leaders. Uh, we have a third. She can't be with us tonight. Um, and I think the next question is what's Indivisible? And Indivisible is a progressive organization formed by two former congressional staffers when Trump was elected. They um, got together, tried to figure out what they could do other than rip out their hair. And they created a guide to progressive change based on their inside information. And it basically went viral. And uh, Candace, you forgot an important detail. What's that? Um, a couple of bottles of wine while talking oh. with other congressional former staffers and saying, what can we do? So I think the wine needs to play in there. And they had no idea that they were gonna start a movement. Yep. And they did. Because there's there's thousands of, of indivisible groups around the country. Yep, and, and the mission, just to be absolutely clear, is to elect progressive leaders, rebuild our democracy and defeat the Trump agenda. So that's where this is all coming from, just to be on the complete up and up. Um, and Etta, you want to tell them what Truth Brigade and Truth Brigade Illinois are? Yes. Um, Truth Brigade started in August of 2020. And I actually, this was, you know, pre-pandemic days. I was in Washington, D.C. There was a, a meeting of uh, nationally of leaders of Indivisible and uh, Indivisible groups around the country. And one of the side um, things that we could go to, no, actually, I think maybe this was by Zoom. You're right, it was by Zoom. We ended up, uh, I ended up going to this thing about fighting disinformation. And what I found out was something pretty exciting to think that I, just one person, could make a difference in sharing the truth, especially on social media. And that really sort of got started then. Truth Brigade Illinois um, follows along with, um, Indivisible National Truth Brigade. And uh, Candace, you got involved in that um, um, several, well, what is it, last year sometime? Last year, I think in about August of last year. Okay. So um, that's kind of what we are, so. And yeah, and here's the mission of Truth Brigade, which which I like. It, this is a long one, but I think it, it tells what we're about, which is, it's a grassroots truth tellers. It's an ever-growing community. And what we're trying to do is disrupt the flow of disinformation online and offline. Uh, so the way we do that is by strategically writing and sharing 
powerful, personal, and unified counter messages to the most um, damaging and destabilizing lies. So we try to identify the disinformation that's out there that's most damaging, and we try to counter it by putting out the truth, basically. And then we track our impact. We try to learn and make adjustments, and we do it over and over again um, with the goal of reclaiming a civil society built on the shared value of the pursuit of objective truths. Our logo is kind of make lying wrong again. Um, Candace, can I just jump in and say, because I'm not 100% certain if people are a little confused about the difference between disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation. Maybe you've all of you have heard those different terms and sometimes some of them are used interchangeably, but I'm just gonna mention um, so that we're kind of clear. Disinformation is actually um, things that are not true that are being shared with the intent of causing harm in some way or other. So basically lies that are meant to cause harm. <clears throat> um, misinformation is actually not with the intent of causing harms. And I gotta say that probably all of us have been guilty of uh, misinformation because we've shared something, but it wasn't really true and we didn't realize it and we didn't mean to, uh, we didn't mean to hurt anybody, but we've done that. Um, so sometimes the lies we might encounter on social media, uh, there wasn't a mal, uh, you know, a, a bad intention for it, it's just, it gets out there and people share it and they don't know. Um, thirdly, malinformation. This is um, has real intention. It's basically taking something that's a truth, but um, kind of altering it in a way that makes it false. Um, I remember back during the campaign in 2020, uh, Joe Biden was talking about, um, I think he may have been talking about defunding the police and Black Lives Matter. I'm not sure exactly the, the content, but he was saying that his opponent was saying that you wouldn't be safe in Joe Biden's uh, America. And so he quoted Trump and this was videotaped. And what they was used then in an ad and was shared places was you won't be safe in Joe Biden's America. So it's taking something totally out of context and making it a lie then. So yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, and that's a, those are those are good distinctions. And a lot of people pass on disinformation or misinformation just because they're they're ignorant of it. Um, they don't realize that it, what it is. Uh, I've done it. I've done it. So it's okay if you've done it. Yeah. And the truth brigade approach is to counter disinformation by sharing accurate information. Uh, and we're not trying to change the minds of people on the far right. Um, we realize that some people have made up their minds and have no interest in changing it. So we don't spend a lot of time trying to fight with people. We're basically focused on reaching persuadable people and pointing out to people where there's misinformation and disinformation. So we share that information on social media and in face-to-face -face, um, meetings using an approach that um, is designed to build on what we have in common um, and then point out the disinformation and who and why is spreading the disinformation, the untruths. And then we also share our vision of how we think things should be. And we're gonna go into that in much more detail. But that's um, and um, yeah, hey, hey, you're sorry. going ahead too fast. Yeah, yes. Sorry. Back to our five my mouse is out of control. <laughs> That little finger, you got to watch that. Um, so as we were approaching, um, especially when uh, Truth Brigade started, there was so much disinformation out there. And what, what, what we noticed, what, uh, what the people who started it noticed is that all of, a lot of this disinformation was being shared by a very small number of accounts on social media. And it was amplified and it went everywhere. So the same message would be put on so many different uh, websites, so many different um, pages, like on Facebook, it would be shared on so many different accounts on Twitter, be the exact same message, but it was a network. And so like one person or a bot could be sharing this and would be going 
went all over the place. So the basic idea was, how can we use the algorithms that are there in Twitter and Facebook to spread the truth? And how can we be different at it than the, the uh, bots that were doing this? So um, there's a much more involved maybe explanation of it, but we came up with what we call the five commandments of truth self-telling because we figure, you know, 10 commandments is so yesterday, you know, so we, we, we write it down to five. So Candace, what's our first one? Our first one, and let me just yeah. say that yeah. it was a very yeah. big relief to me to come to the Truth Brigade approach because I was spending a lot of time being horribly frustrated with misinformation that I saw and disinformation I saw on Facebook. I was a big user of Facebook. Um, and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to change people's mind, but it drove me crazy to see these flat out lies sometimes, but lots of times just bad information. And so I was really relieved when I found Truth Brigade and found a way to approach that. And the first thing they did, said, you know, and the, the first commandment is, is whatever you do, don't engage. Just don't amplify disinformation when you see it out there. Don't respond at all. Ooh, so that's, that's hard. <laughs> it's really hard because you want to say, well, you stupid idiot. I can't believe you said that. That's dead wrong. Somebody gave you a line of BS. But the first commandment, and since we have an answer to what else we can do, the first commandment you can handle, just don't amplify it. Because what happens is when you comment on a Facebook post, it makes more people see it. And it goes into the algorithm. And if you, if you, even if you put an angry face on it, it, it makes more people see it. So what you don't want to do is make more people see disinformation. So you want to cover two? Yes. So what we're going to do then as uh, responsible sharers of information on social media is to combat disinformation, we make a new post using a true sandwich. Now, you might have heard of the true sandwich. It was um, a phrase um, coined by George Lakoff, who was a linguist at University of Berkeley. And basically he was saying to, to give the possibility for people to change their mind, you start with something that's a truth. You put the lie in the middle, and then you end sort of with the truth. But we, we kind of look a little more uh, closely at it and see that what we're trying to do is we're trying to start off with something that's a shared truth or a shared value, something that pretty much most people can agree on. The next part of the sandwich, the juicy part, is where we call out the lie or the bad actor, or we see the villains. And then we kind of look like question, why are they spreading this information? And why are they trying to make me mad? And why are they trying to get me all right, riled up? So that middle part, we don't necessarily, we pretty much stay away from naming names. We're more general, but we then question the motivation behind this disinformation that we're seeing. Then, again, using this formula, we go back to the truth. And what we're trying to do is um, go off of the lie that the disinformation that's been shared and approach the truth with looking at our, looking at our vision for how life should be and how, what, what the truth would be in this situation. So number three. Number three is, doesn't want to move, hold on. There we go. Um, what we try to do then, commandment three is use links to credible news sources and or a graphic with your post. So graphics draw people's attention. It can evoke emotion. Um, credible news sources are always handy, especially if you're disputing something that's a little more you know, technical having a credible news source attached to it is a way to defend uh, what you're talking about. And you know, uh, Candace, I know that I um, notice things on Twitter and also on Facebook more if it has a graphic or if it has a link, I pay attention to it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So um, then 
to try and help propel things out there, we use uh, two hashtags, Truth Brigade and Truth Brigade Illinois. So when we're posting on social media, whether that's Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, even TikTok, I haven't quite gotten into TikTok, but I might this summer. Uh, this hashtag, particularly with Twitter, will help us know how many people are being able to see this. Right, and commandment five is we amplify each other's posts. So um, as one, uh, one of our great communicators put it, if nobody sees it, then it hasn't really happened. So we try to spread when other people are putting together these careful truth sandwiches, we try to amplify other truth brigaders on Facebook and on Twitter and share each other's posts so that um, we can spread the truth as far as possible. How do you want to talk? So this is sort of a summary of all those. Yeah, and, and when we the national group gets together, we always quickly go over this. Mark's important things, no clicks or comments on the bad guys. Take that finger away, don't do anything. Don't use the language of this, the disinformers. If you name it, you spread it. And particularly we noticed that in with journalists are doing that. They need to learn it too. We want to respond as people as authentic and real people when we're engaging and trying to spread the truth and question disinformation. We don't argue. We really focus on common values. Don't respond just with facts. Instead, raise questions. Gently, probably the emphasis is on gently, share with persuadable people and use the hashtag truth brigade. Yep. Um, so just to go into a little bit of more of how this true sandwich works, uh, the, you know, the formula is value villains vision. So the top of the sandwich is a shared value. So here's an example of a shared value. No matter our race, background, or zip code, we generally agree that we want our children to have an excellent education. Um, well, yeah, I think I think everybody pretty much wants kids to have a good education. I mean, that seems pretty basic, but I'm kind of wondering, I notice sometimes, Candace, you start off with this, no matter our race, background, or zip code. Um, why, why are you using that kind of terminology there? That is part of an approach called the race class narrative, and and studies and people looking into this have said, you know, part of what's going on right now is people are trying to divide us um, by pointing out our differences. And sometimes people who are, you know, people of color or people who are economically disadvantaged, when someone says we and say we agree, we want our children to have an excellent education. They don't feel included in that because that we comes across to them as white people, right? Um, Middle-class white people. So part of the race class narrative that we try to work with is to be more inclusive and to bring people together by explicitly stating who the, who the we is. So basically, you know, regardless of race, regardless of background or where we live, we generally agree we want our children to have an excellent education. We're trying to make a bigger we. So um, I have the worst time, uh, Candace, with the middle part of the sandwich. Um, um, how about you? You want to talk about that? Sure. Um, the middle of the sandwich is where, where you call out the disinformation. You name who the villain is that's that's spreading the disinformation and you try to get the people who are looking at these truth sandwiches to think about where it's coming from why why would someone spread this disinformation so that's where we kind of that's where we're trying to reach people to make them think right so here's an example that went with that first one but now certain politicians and special interest groups are advocating dismantling our public education system to funnel public tax money into private hands and create schools for profit. We want people to wonder 
and 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 we're pointing out why someone might be there at the school boards trying to cause trouble. Um, and, and Candace, we 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 don't like usually in our true sandwiches. We don't identify a particular politician usually that's saying something. We we kind of are more general, but you have a couple of uh, possible ways to. Um, <coughs> kind of categorize people down here. Do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, so what happens is, I mean, we could just say Republicans, but that turns a lot of people off because not all Republicans are the same. And so the, it's a little more specific. We use terms like MAGA faction or Trump Republicans to sort of narrow it down into people who are followers of Trump. And that that identifies it a little bit more. And then do you want to talk about the vision? The okay. Model? sandwich so um again the the bottom part of the sandwich is our vision of or what we are for essentially so in this situation we've realized that we all care about kids getting a good education but some people are trying to take that away and kind of just siphon money off for certain people to have good schools um what our vision is we can join together and stand up for a public education system that benefits the whole country, not just a select few. So what we're trying to do with this vision is again, have people start thinking, well, why would people not wanna have this? And that's what our goal is. In confronting disinformation, we're have, wanting people to ask questions. Some of the questions we're asking, we're trying to pose things that will get people asking questions too, so they can look into it and decide, I'm not going with that bit of this information. So this is the whole one like this. So yeah, so here's the full example um, where we put it together and then we put that out there with the hashtag Truth Brigade, Truth Brigade Illinois, and put it with an image like this, forward together for our schools. Um, so that's an example. And then here's just to show you another example of those three components. The, this is an environmental truth sandwich. That first, the first part is no matter what we look like or where we come from, um, most of us want to care for our land, air, water, and leave things better off for those to come. And then Eddie, you want to talk about the, there are, there's our, our villain statement after that. Okay, but today a handful of politicians and the fossil fuel CEOs that fund them are trying to divide us from each other, hoping that if they can distract us from the fact they are profiting off poisoning our families, we will look the other way while they put clean energy solutions we know could work out of our reach. And then we've got our vision statement. By rejecting their lies and joining together across race, origin, zip code, we can make this a place where we're that we're proud to leave our kids for generations to come. Um, and one, some of the advice that we get is, you know, you, what you need to say to people, you need to say what you're for, say what you're for, say what you're for. And so you want to make a statement about the way things could be. So that's our vision um, that we can make this a place we're proud to leave our kids. So that's that's an, another example of a true sandwich. Uh, you want to talk about critical thinking? Yes. Um, again, um, sometimes people spend a lot of time on social media and they get their news from there and the news isn't necessarily well sourced. So we want to teach people and encourage people to think critically about what's being said. Um, that's something I think we started really being aware was important back when we had number 45 as president because there were verifiable lies that were coming out of his mouth all the time. And some people believed them. Some people didn't question whether they should drink bleach or not to get rid of COVID germs. Um, this, this is something that we are trying to have people say, oh, 
Is that right? Well, let's see, where did that come from? Who said that? What happened? And why? Why is he doing that? If people are starting to question, then they can um, start to open their minds to what might be something, another way to see something that would be not disinformation. And just to support that, um, there was a study about critical thinking. They found that 85% um, of disinformation out there is just shared inadvertently. Uh, people don't check their sources. That's so, amazing. Yeah, it really, and so if they found that if people were told to check their sources, it reduced disinformation sharing by 15%, and that impact kept on, that last, lasted. So we really do open minds by, you know, getting people to think about, hey, why, why do you think that's true, and why do you think someone said that? And then we already talked about this, but we are committed to fighting the racism and classism, which is which divides us by we utilizing that race class narrative in our messaging, because so much of the disinformation out there is all about making us be afraid of each other and think that somebody's got more than we've got um, and driving us apart. And what we try to do is fight that so that we can come together. there we go I'm gonna talk about the impact. oh yes the impact it's always exciting um we're not a huge group of people um there are um several hundred people who are part of the truth brigade nationally um well there's hundreds i don't know exactly how many but what we do know is that we can track the number of impressions on twitter of the messages that have the hashtag truth brigade on it. And since August of 2020, there have been, as of last week, 338 million impressions. That means times that it was seen by in someone's uh, feed on Twitter. And, and just last week, for a whole week, there were 8.8 .8 million Twitter impressions from truth brigade messages that were shared with that. Now, it's not that many people who are getting millions of views. Now, we don't, we're not able to track safe, uh, Facebook in the same way, but uh, we believe that there's a similar number of views, maybe even greater than that. It's harder to track because of the algorithms and the lack of transparency on Facebook. But um, so even though we're not a huge group of people, we are a personal, we are... <coughs> sharing um, our response to disinformation and we're having an impact. Um, it, we're also proud of the fact that um, we were a finalist for uh, these read awards, which are for um, political campaigns, but uh, we were finalists in the category of innovation and grassroots activism, um, so, which is another important impact. Um, so if you're interested, we've got um, some meetings coming up and I will put these links in the chat. We do true sandwich shops, we call them every Friday for an hour and a half. We get whoever's interested together and we work on creating and posting true sandwiches and working on how you do Twitter and how you do Facebook um, and, and technical issues. And we try to improve our truth telling skills. So we're doing that every Friday from 11 to 12.30. And we're also hosting a meeting um, on May 18th, next Wednesday at 7.30 Central about combating disinformation about January 6th, 2021 insurrection. Nick Newsom of Demcast is gonna be with us to talk about it. Um, those, the uh, hearings are coming up uh, in June. And then um, I, I will also put these links and resources in the chat. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, we're at Truth Brigade Illinois. You can email us at truthbrigadeillinois at gmail.com. We have a membership form. Uh, if you sign up for Truth Brigade, we will put you on our mailing list and let you know about meetings. We have a Facebook group that you can join. Just look for Truth Brigade Illinois. We have uh, an information document about how we do it. And then Indivisible National has its own sign up form. And then we've got to sign up for the uh, 
through sandwich shops. And I'll put them in the chat. Ada, you have I was going to say, essentially, Truth Brigade Illinois um, is a group of people who really uh, feel passionately about how the uh, social media platforms have been used most effectively to share disinformation. And we want to effectively combat that. And I believe we're doing that to a degree and it's only going to grow because we have a very uh, focused group of people who are getting better and better at this. It's amazing what I've learned in the last year and a half on how to effectively message. So. All right, are you, uh, um, uh, I, I'm sorry, my, Let's start with the questions. I've been getting messaged here by my sister. So uh, I'm glad to see all you guys are, are in here. Um, I just have one question for you. Oh, I'm sorry, go, Justin, you got the first question. Go ahead, I'll save mine for later. So what, how do you guys determine whether uh, something is true or not? Um, I take that one out. How do we do certain? Well, um, facts. Uh, let's say, uh, you know, I mentioned the, the bleach. I mean, this is an old thing. Having bleach, taking bleach uh, for COVID 19, um, there was no evidence that that was the case. In fact, there was evidence that it was harmful. And so that was a pretty much a no brainer. Um, so I, we are looking at data and, you know, some, some of the things which come out of some politicians mouths and get a following for are clearly even based on things that they have said previously are false. That, yeah, I don't know. We tend to focus our campaigns on, you know, we don't go into every lie. We tend to focus our campaigns on outstanding disinformation. And, and, and based uh, on what's um, really having the most impact on um, and, and being seen the most on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so I guess you would say trending the most, um, <clears throat> you know, and every week it might be slightly different. That's why uh, coming up with our meeting that we're having <clears throat> on the 18th, we're looking ahead to the uh, January 6th committee hearings where I'm certain that there's going to be a lot of information both in uh, covered by the media and also information that's spread online that uh, counters the testimony that's being heard. And so we are we are wanting to make sure we're ready to confront that proactively. Having trouble here raising my hand. Is anybody else in line otherwise? No, go ahead. Just, just following up on that question, um, Take one of the hottest items right now in the news, whether it's true or not, this whole situation around uh, defense of Ukraine, that we're protecting sovereignty there. We need a war with Russia to back them off. Uh, how would you determine what's true and false in that whole discussion? Because it's actually uh, places everybody in a, in a real jeopardy. Um, well, we've, we've done um, a bit of sharing messages about Ukraine. Um, I think, you know, we, we've uh, looked at, and, you know, some of, actually some of the uh, people that are in Truth Brigade National, um, th that's all they do every day. That's their day job is actually looking at disinformation and where it's coming from and how much of it is coming. And so um, when there's information coming out that clearly is generated in Russia, that there are um, biochemical labs in Ukraine, but there's data to indicate that's not true. 
that's the kind of thing that we can uh, um, respond to. Now we're not, um, I, I think what, uh, Ron, what you asked is more, um, you know, should we really go whole hog against Russia? No, I'm actually, know. I'm actually asking, where do you start your investigation? Do you start it at the downing of the Berlin Wall and the pledge not to move east that was violated? Do you start it when the West toppled the uh, elected government that brought in uh, neo-Nazis in a support of um, the, the coup that took place? Do you start when uh, Putin was provoked because of these the danger of these weapons and a, uh, a strike that he moved preemptively? Uh, those, just now, as you said, those weapons, these labs and things that did not exist according to what you just said, no truth to it because it was put out by the Russians. Those labs have now been verified by Victoria Newland and others in public. So um, I guess my question is, what do we bring into what we pick as a fact or not when the facts are not something in and of themselves, they actually are part of a much broader dynamic of the whole hyperinflation, the financial blowout, the fact that we could have moved to a, a combined development program and the West rejected that because we ourselves are victims of these uh, manipulations and bailouts. So we get manipulated to fight the wrong enemy. And I, what you just said, you started with the invasion as opposed to starting back when Ukraine was a, uh, a so sovereign nation, so-called, coming out of the, uh, the fall of the, uh, the Russian situation. So again, you, you pick an arbitrary place to start and an arbitrary place to, um, to start what you say is, is the truth. And you leave uh -huh. out the bigger dynamics. We are not trying to take on the entire world. We research. Well, the entire world's involved in the truth. Well, of course, but we're not trying to solve everything. We, uh, we identify information that's out there and we, I, if we identify it as disinformation, then we try to fight counter that with real information. We are not just advocating for one position or another. We're looking at what's out there as, as issues where disinformation is being spread. But a lot of the information has now been proven to be false well, what, what uh, Ron, what specific um, information has been false? Well, that, for, for example, you know, the one that you cited that uh, somehow, or you referred to it, that somehow the, uh, the notion is still out there that the, the Russians affected the election or that um, Russia is the aggressor here when we've been moving against Russia through NATO, you know, so your, your choice of what you say is a, is the truth or not is your own choice based on your own assumptions as opposed to a much broader reality. Well, um, I could probably say the same to you. I think we have uh, okay. different points of view. So really what we're about is um, trying our best to determine what is harmful information that is not connected to what we understand is right. truth and what is um, what is verifiable and that is actually being used to hurt people. Um, okay, I'll, I'll let now, somebody else get on. I'll just, one last thing. So if we look at the, the only way we're going to get out of this is negotiation, joint development, and we build out of this, like on a Lincoln program for development in every nation. So if we don't go to that negotiation because we're continuing to foster the fight, we're never going to get there. We're going to get the war. So my point is just that we've got to actually get to a point where you can put a solution on the table and actualize it. So I'll well, let somebody and, else jump in. You know, no, Ron, it, and it's good that, you know, you, what, what you're saying makes me realize that also need to point out again, we're not about advocating so much for a certain position as identifying things that just aren't right that are well, being truths involved in we've okay. got to actually get something truthful okay let's uh ron i know you uh, had a lot in there but i'd like to move on to other no, questions no, we should we should move on okay thank you ron uh so i have justin charles and then margaret so justin go ahead with your question yes have you guys made a truth sandwich 
in regards to the current administration blaming in, uh, inflation on corporate greed and uh, the war in Ukraine, which is not obviously not true. Wait, what? It, what's what? That's yes, a yes, complicated we, question. Have you guys put out a? <laughs> have you guys true. made a truth sandwich about the administration's false claims regarding these causes of inflation? Well, what what specific false claims? That it is that inflation is caused by greed and 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 Putin. Um, what what, um, what do you have to debunk the idea that greed isn't part of the the factor? The fact that we printed more money no, wait, uh, wait. in twenty twenty than than uh, you know well, we printed I, a I, shit ton of money in one year com relative to uh, other times in our history where we printed out money. When you print out money, I, that creates more demand. Uh, than you would have otherwise had because there's hey. more demand and people are buying things than they would never have bought otherwise. Uh, and then the market adjusts uh, by, uh, you know, you know, price increases, et cetera. Well, um, what we have seen um, is that um, Yes, there's a demand and supply and demand issues, supply chain issues, but let's let's say example, um, you know, gas prices. Um, whether it's gas companies or food companies, uh, same thing. Uh, it's like the profits have grown inordinately, much more than the increase of the actual cost of the raw materials to make something. And um, that uh, inordinate huge surge in profits is what we're questioning. And with any truth messages, truth sandwiches that we'd put out is like, why would this be happening, especially when we're at a time where we're all vulnerable, we've become all vulnerable because of uh, COVID and the challenges of that. I don't know, Candace, do you have any response? I was, um, I was gonna say that, um, you know, I would need to understand, I mean, I, I think, are you telling me that you believe that the administration is responsible for uh, inflation and that it doesn't have anything to do with what the corporations are doing. Um, Cause I think then we probably would disagree, but. So uh, uh, yeah, I mean the, the, <clears throat> the misinformation or malinformation or whatever <clears throat> phrase eology you want to put it I have a point, point of order. Do a point. Okay, 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 okay. Well, point of order. Point of order. Okay. Um, we need, we need, we need to have uh, a, we need to have certain definitions defined that everybody can agree upon before we uh, argue them. And one of them is what inflation is. And the simplest right. explanation is too many okay. dollars chasing too few goods. And uh, I will grant uh, Justin Trucker, uh, Justin Tucker, being correct that. Uh, Corporations do not print money, so they are not responsible for too many dollars. Okay. Now, they could be responsible for too few goods if they decided to just cut back production, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think that uh, they're, they're trying to produce all they can, but uh, you know, things are just they're flying off the shelf and you can't, you know, it's, it's because of too, you know, so many dollars and so many hands, you know, the stuff's flying off the shelf. Okay. And oil is expensive, and of course, oil affects everything. Everything you buy from your supermarket came there in a truck, so it's automatically got a okay. you know price inflator built into. It. All right, Justin, we are going down another rabbit hole as to what is truth, but they're trying to tell us what the way to combat disinformation is, and uh, 
Well, if, can if, we if, get another question? If you don't, if you don't mind, can I'd we like have to another question? On. We're moving on to other questioners now, if you don't mind, Justin. Uh, okay, Charles, you're next. Okay, thank you for the presentation in advance. Um, by the way, I want to remind everyone here, we are not here to listen to each and every one of your own personal misinformation presentations. Now, my question is, a lot of people don't seem to rely, and you reference this, on actual valid news reports. And every single day, somebody sends me one of these silly, nonsensical talking head podcasts for some <laughs> nutcase blubbering uh, on and on and on. And I don't know quite how to reference these or file them away. I'm not certain how to counter them. I mean, last week at the College of Complexes, we had to sit through a three minute cartoon with Elmer <laughs> Fudd. And I don't think that's an appropriate place for the, these things either. But yeah, what do you think about these yeah. podcasts that people are relying hey, on? What's the question, Charlie? Hey, I don't know what hey, you let question. me finish, Justin. Justin, Tim is the Judge, chair. You finish, Charlie. We did this last week. I ask you a question. What do we do to counter people who rely upon these podcasts as valid information? Give us an example. What? All these ones about COVID. <laughs> Which one, Charlie? Can you be they more specific? They have doctors. Saying what? Oh, God. Okay. They're all over the social media. Ivermectin. <laughs> yes. All right. Good example. All right. Let's 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 um. I'll I'll give you a good example of what he's talking about. Last week I uh, was talking about the advantages of capitalism and played a little three minute cartoon by Elmer Fudd explaining what capitalism was, and I thought it added greatly to the speech. Charlie said to me, he said, uh, "Well, it's just another damn blasted cartoon. It doesn't say a damn word." And then some. Yes, some I'm a mature adult, and I expect information above the level of. Of the Looney Tunes cartoons. Well, the Looney Tunes cartoons certainly was a good, uh, was a. Hey, good I'm the judge of the information, yeah. and I. Hey, found, point of order. Point of order. Uh, Go ahead, Justin. Man, I don't do, know why Charlie the asked the question, is right? Hey, I didn't start. ask you to answer my question, Tim. I was giving an example of what what could go wrong, but anyway. I didn't I ask thought the you questions to give went an to the, the the presentators, not somebody else. All right, so I'm sorry. My apologies. I violated our own rules. So go ahead, please. I, you know, you asked what you do about podcasts and things like that. And there are plenty of them out there. And I wish I had the ability to shut down the, the bad ones. But what the kind of thing, Ivermectin is probably a perfect example, right? Where we find that people were spreading it across Facebook and other places that Ivermectin was a great way to treat COVID. When in fact, if you look at all the medical information, out there, it's not, and it's bad for people and it hurts people. And that's the kind of disinformation where we would try to not argue with each individual person, but we would put out true statements about the fact that we all want to be healthy and that certain people are spreading it, you know, for profit or whatever their own reasons for spreading the, the myths about ivermectin, they're being spread, and that what we want is a healthy uh, is, is healthy people. And we might attach an article about scientific studies that show that there was absolutely no proof. That's the kind of thing that we would do. Thank you. Okay, uh, I believe Margaret was next on the question. So Margaret, please go ahead. This may be too, <clears throat> this may be too specific, Candace and Ada, but when I turn on my telephone, uh, I often get a little news break or news flash and something is coming out saying that the military hierarchy in the Ukraine are saying that Putin uh, is suffering from cancer. Uh, they're also somebody saying, I don't know if they are, that alleging perhaps that he was shaking uncontrollably earlier this year. Maybe he has Parkinson's. And then they're finally saying that a coup is imminent to overthrow him in Russia. 
Now, where does all this stuff come from? And is there any merit to it, a Candace and Etta? And that might be too specific a question. Well, it's a great question. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the, you know, we don't have a giant truth machine. Um, we try to take on sort of the, you know, the national and we try to track kind of the issues of the day that are sort of the most harmful. I've heard the same thing that he might have Parkinson's. Um, that's not the kind of thing that, that unless, uh, that's not the kind of thing that we would probably take on because we don't have any particular source of truth there. And it's, I don't know, you know, is it harmful? I don't know. I mean, is that a problem? But yeah, I wish, I wish we had a truth machine where we could say what the absolute truth is. What we do is try to go to the most reliable sources, um, which of course can be greatly in dispute, but we try our best to find scientific basis or, you know, journalists who've done the research and that type of thing. And we don't take on everything. Right. No, we try to try to Very specific things. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of a narrow focus because you know we're not going to take on whether or not the you know how to how to end war. <clears throat> we're just taking on the disinformation that people are spreading around that we feel is harmful. Okay, um, uh, and, okay, the next we have Raj, then we have Ellen, and then we have Justin again. So Raj, go ahead. Uh, when, when I read about this, this uh, event, and I thought there is, there, is, there is no truth. People have opinion, people do not know the truth. And, and so I do not know what you are trying to make out of this thing, the truth, that truth said there is no truth. I mean, people, uh, Republican has one opinion, Democrats have their opinion, and actual events, what is happening in Ukraine war, we do not know what is truth and what is lie. Because we do not have what is information. Trump, has, Biden hasn't given the information. Biden doesn't talk about what they talk to Putin over, over conversation, the negotiation, what happened, what, what, what is uh, Biden's aim. So we cannot do on any issue you go that there is a truth. So, I mean, I do, I do not think what you guys are trying to make out of that. Well, let me give you an example. I mean, I, obviously there's many shades of truth and many things that you can argue over, but there are some things that are truth and maybe some of you will argue with this, but I will trust the scientists who tell us that global warming is caused by humans and that we are heating up the earth at an unprecedented rate. And that if we don't do something about it within the next five years, that we are gonna have massive problems, that we're having massive problems now. And so there is scientific proof to support that. And yet some people, I mean, I've had intelligent people say to me, oh, well, there's always been climate change, we'll deal with it. And that's the kind of disinformation that we try to fight that with scientific information, there is scientific information. You can argue with some of it, but there, there are some things that are closer to objective truths than political opinions. And we try to substantiate that where we can. I'm, 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 so, I'm sorry to argue with you about this. Science is there, okay? But uh, they, are, they are hypothesis. Nobody's saying that they are proven beyond reasonable doubt that science requires. That, that human caused this particular thing. It might have so many, it might be have a variable cycles that do it. So I don't know, I mean, no matter what, what is the issue or how much scientific, unless born without beyond reasonable doubt, there is going to be a dispute. There are going to be different opinions. And so uh, you are trying to, unless I assume that you are the arbiter of the truth. And if you are the arbiter of the truth, then discussion stops. Which truth you are going to accept besides yours? Okay? And whose truth you are not going to accept? Okay? And there is, there is a big question. So you can tell about that. What is the opinion? You have different opinion. Let's talk about this. But uh, certainty? I mean, but beyond when, reasonable doubt? When 98, you know, DNA, most people accept that DNA 
you know, in 99.9% of the time with our current DNA testing method, you can tell where the DNA came from. And there are a few, you know, few, few people who claim that's not true. There are some things that are completely arguable about, and there are some things that are closer to objective truth. And there's some disinformation out there that you can show that people are just flat out lying. There is lying, you know, some people just lie. And I think that you can expose the basis of some of those lies and the, that the, the reasons that they're telling those lies and you get closer to the truth. Uh, Tim, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, Ellen Corley, you're next. Yes, hi. Um, <clears throat> thank you uh, for your talk. It's an important issue. I have been uh, deplatformed, you know, I'm a professional market researcher, you know, truth finder, fact checker, uh, you know, MBA in marketing and statistics and science and uh, MBA in teaching. And yet I've been thrown off uh, LinkedIn, Twitter for sharing scientific articles that um, the first was Michael Yaden. Anybody who uses the word any, you know, that vaccine it's got polyglycol in it. It's got uh, graphene in it that, you know, that 40,000 people just dropped dead immediately, uh, that the, the tests were the all-cause mortality rates finally gotten out of Pfizer revealed that um, they're, they're like, we're not going to show you any all-cause mortality um, data. Uh, and then when they finally got it, it, it just blatantly shows people are dropping dead and uh, the stock market went down. But yet every day, NPR and presumably your group, you know, is, um, is saying, oh, I found an article. They would write, I go, why did you block me? They go, oh, look, here's an article. You said that there, uh, the vaccines were dangerous and not effective. Um, you know, here's 70,000 scientists saying that, uh, Joe Rogan. and. Uh, and so it's and the evidence has come out that BBC, Bellingcat, Reuters, um, here's this article, Max Blumenthal came out, you know, that this, that the news is, you know, you got news guard, the fact checkers, you go, oh, here's a fact checker that says misinformation is when someone says there's anything wrong with the vaccine. Uh, you know, at some point we really need to get this to an appeals court, you know, um, like a hey, what's the of, question look at well i'm saying have you ever you know questioned your fact check you know regarding vaccines i mean there's seventy thousand scientists say you know stop this uh, this vaccine mandate don't give it to children investigate and put pfizer into prison uh, along with dyncor and the cia and the Hey. Gates and and the, all how many these... questions do you get? Okay, no, 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 I'm just asking. Did, have Justin, you ever just let it go? Up, how going. many times do you there, see this uh, as the hugest issue of misinformation in our lifetime? And I, you know, if you just say, "Oh well, we found an article," um, that's all there is. Uh, there, we still got a problem. How how do you handle that? Well, I'm we 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 look to reliable sources, and the reliable sources. You know that you, it, we hope Washington Post, the New York Times. They're not. They're owned by the CIA. Those are not reliable sources. There's, you know, tons of evidence time, that's please. been suppressed. All right, let, 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 Ellen, let the let, let, let's let our speakers mm -hmm. read about your question. I mean, uh, right. answer your I question. I mean, I think could address some of the specific. You know, forty-five thousand. People dying, you know, why are they, they're going to hey, you allow can say this Pfizer to maybe? take uh, no, no, over no, no, NPR Justin, I'll, and I'll sponsor let it go. this? Uh, you know, I'm, the thing is, you you you've got to Damn. clarify how whether or not your sources are reliable. Okay, Just because Ellen. their Washington Post does not make Damn. them reliable. Ellen, okay. what do you want, Charlie? Will you kindly chair the meeting? I'm chairing the meeting. I was oh, come on, Ron, finish your question. Charlie sets this whole thing up to be unreliable. He's an FBI red right. squad uh, person. Ellen, that wouldn't Ellen. It's time to turn because, Ellen off. Of this Ellen, turn let's, off. Uh, Ellen. He's done at the publisher level. Okay, Ellen, let's uh, let our 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 um our speakers rebut your I mean answer your question, please. I have I have an answer. Um what what we believed we were coming here was to share the methodology of how to share 
True. And how to effectively try and have people ask questions and decide whether they would change their mind. And then uh, I'm not going to agree with Ellen, but maybe she would use the truth sandwich in the same way that we would and could be effective, more mm -hmm. effective than she is with how she's presenting information. So really what we're about is a methodology. Mm -hmm. You may not agree with everything that we take on, but I think the methodology is effective and that's what we're about. Okay. And I have done a lot of research and have had people present to me information that kind of um, mimics what you said about you know, how dangerous the vaccines are. And I have seen that information and it has not been documented. People say it's out, it just, I, I have not found that to be true, but that's, that's just- um, It's because it's been censored. You don't, haven't seen the truth. They censor, the, you know, Michael Yaden, an expert at thing. So the most expert opinions are just gone. 300,000, you know, Ellen. scientists gone. And you know, are not given a chance okay. to even be on the Ellen, platform. Ellen, this is a Nazi. This is so ridiculous. Problem. Why are we listening Wait, to this? Ellen, Ellen, no, it's, who, it's, who is that asshole? Who? What asshole Doug is saying Bingley. that? Okay, Ellen, yeah. Not, who, you shut up. Okay, you mind your own right, business. Ellen, I'm good. Ellen, I've got a degree in science. I don't Let's think. Oh yeah, do. fuck you, Doug. Okay, Ellen. <laughs> I, I well, I, I muted you, so you know. Um, our next questioner, please, Justin, I know you had your hand up, so please go ahead. Uh, I think the question I was going to ask, I forgot what I was going to ask <laughs> because, uh, but I do have another one. Uh, so from a epistemological standpoint, or, okay, I, re I remember now. Um, Candace, I believe you said something along the lines of if you could shut down these podcasts, you would. Well, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's, that, that's not fair. That, that's an overstatement on my part, but there are certain um when you hear people spreading lies that desperate angry people believe because they want to believe it it would make me happier if they weren't there but of course there's a right to free speech so but go ahead ask your question I'm you sorry. uh answer i was just basically gonna ask do you see any role of the government to uh label things as true false does the government have a interest in curbing uh platforms that spread disinformation i think there needs to be some control some limitation over like facebook and and twitter to hold them responsible for some of the harmful misinformation that's out there how you do that um, I'm no expert in what the next best step on that is, but do I think something, I, do I think there needs to be some sort of regulation? Yeah, I do. Okay. All right, uh, Justin, are you, did you get your questions answered? Cause I know Charlie's got another one ready to yeah, go. Yeah, that was my that. question. Uh, yes, that was my question. Okay, uh, Charlie, go ahead. We, uh, I know you're quite feisty again, so please go ahead with your question. I, uh... I've been dealing many years with the, as a librarian with the, on the issue of censorship and so forth, but it's always been my practice simply to post accurate information, whereas the Truth Brigade seems to want to uh, respond to bad information in some fashion, but I kind of maintain that I don't even acknowledge bad information as having any validity to be in print or anywhere and simply uh, deal with accurate information at any given time. It's, do you think my practice has any validity? Well, I think you're sharing your own truth absolutely has validity. And I understand your viewpoint that it's like, if we all just backed up what we were thinking that and and put it out there with our documentation that'd be great but the the reality is that we live in a world where people are moving fast they're going through facebook a lot of people just don't think it through and they just they see something that says 
oh my God, you know, this caused a, a, a child to die. And then they pass it on without looking into the facts. It's just amazing how many people pass on an interesting story. And the more horrible it is, the less they look at it. And so we kind of want to go beyond just the, hey, we want to have the integrity to say what we believe is true and back it up to we want to counter some of the bad stuffs out there that people People generally aren't bad people. They're just often getting bad information. And we want to try to help them get as good of information as possible. Okay, uh, Charlie, did you get your question answered? Yeah, thank you. All right, Rod, you're next. And then I'm going to have, I'm going to raise my hand and uh, 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 get, get a question in. So I'll be next after Raj. Hmm. Go ahead, Raj. Go ahead, Raj. Unmute, Raj. I think I muted you by mistake. Okay. Unmute. I'm sorry. A couple of weeks, couple of weeks back, uh, I posted a video of some guy talking about Twitter and uh, what that is about. And and uh, he indicated this is just people are making noise. It doesn't have any validity in terms of influence or in terms of reality. It just uh, that. Millions of people are making just noise or, you know, I hear the water cooler and they are saying this and that. And, and that is reality. So, so the serious, serious discussion on any issue is rare. Sometimes I find in New York Times, the columnist, they say, and some people respond, probably that's the most, probably most serious thing I have found. And still, it's, it's not perfect. Okay, it's still people expressing their opinion that historical experience uh, is just like Biden is doing. He's going drawing on historical experience and acting in a modern time that's not valid. And this is what is happening. So I mean, uh, for, for you, you two people and uh, your group to come out with a truth thing, it just stretched for me, I'm sorry. Thank you, Tim, I'm yeah. done. And I, I understand what you're saying is there's, a, there's just a lot of garbage out there that maybe we should ignore. But we're trying to go for is to address some of the most harmful things that are dividing us and try to provide people with the with accurate information and help them think through why they're why they're getting bad information. I think the critical thinking part is, and you know, maybe that's something. Um, that we would share in common, even though we might come up with different end results with a number of you in the group, but to be able to think critically about what is happening, why, who is doing it, what's the impact, what's behind it. We're wanting people to do that and not just accept it. And hopefully that's something that all of us might have in common is that we would want people to do that. Okay. But but you 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 I'm so I'm sorry. Uh, thinking critically is a really really very complicated subject, and it requires a tremendous amount of skill and knowledge. Okay, it's not easy. Okay, so I mean I mean for you to come out for somebody to be arbiter of a, say I'm critical thinker and this is this. This is this is what everybody is posting on the internet. Even the scholars are posting. But but uh, where do you? How do you decide that this is a result of critical thinking? Okay. Um, I don't know the question. I yeah. Well, you said how do how do we know it's the result of critical thinking? I mean. Yeah. Yes. Well, I guess you never know. I mean, you never know whether or not someone is learning. But sometimes, you know, just to give you a small example, and is that if you call, if you put out some information, if someone says, well, I heard that, you know, Invermectin can cure COVID and they pass it on because they know somebody who's sick, right? And then you put out something that says, hey, think about the fact that, you know, there's scientific proof that it doesn't work and that it's harmed people. And maybe you should think about that somebody's trying to make money off of this, that you might get some people, not all people, but some people to think, hey, maybe I should check this out before I repeat it or pass it on. And so we're, you know, we're one, we're one starfish at a time, right? We don't think we can take on the whole world. We don't think we're going to 
make ignorant people be critical thinkers. But if you can get some people to think a little more critically, if you can get some people to look at the sources a little more closely, we feel like we're making progress. We're, you know, it's it's maybe smaller goals than than you would you would want, but it, but anything we can do to help, right? It's better than just sitting back and saying, oh, look at those idiots. I'm just gonna turn off my computer. Thank you, Tim. I'm done for this question. Okay, now um, let's go back. We, I've got a question for you. Um, you know, a lot of these issues go back to our founding fathers and freedom of the press and the art of what they used to call pamphleteering because they had a lot of uh, pamphleteering back then, which was an equivalent to our, somewhat of our fake news sources. Newspapers were highly partisan and all that other stuff. What do you find to be, uh, besides the sandwich method, what is the one thing you do to help uh, you really, determine what's the truth, what the truth is? Or, or where do you verify your facts from? I'm just curious what, what sourcing you may do. And then um, when you, uh, uh, you know, like, for example, um, and anyway, I, 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 I'm just asking you what, you find to be one of the some of your best sources of for truth um yeah you know there's reliable we first of all we kind of depend on indivisible national who helps with these campaigns and so i don't have to redo all of their work because i trust that they did the work and they're giving us reliable articles so that's part of it but then you kind of google the you google the hell out of it you look at you know New, New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the and the Washington Post and Scientific American and you look and see whether or not it's a it's a scientific journal that's that's run by run by reputable people and that has you know studies especially when you're looking at science when peer reviewed when, yeah yeah peer reviewed and you know you kind of you kind of weigh it that way. I mean, I I recognize that there are people out there who've gone rogue um, and have internet uh, videos out there about how we're all being led down the path. But if you look into their backgrounds um, and where they're coming from, you can find that there's something stinky in the mix, right? So um, you know, I there's no one definitive source but i think if you dig around enough um you can generally debunk some of the conspiracies i don't know as, Ed, as a, anything to that as well, a cor okay before go I, I go into as a corollary to the question what do you guys think about looking at some of the other sides videos like for example i've gone to on this ukraine war i've actually gone to rt.com the official russian news site and a lot of times, too, I'll also go to PressTV.org, which is the official source of the Iranian news feed. And uh, it's very educational just to see what they say on the other side. I mean, do you guys agree with that methodology or am I kind of off a little bit? Well, no, I, I think educating yourself about what all sides are saying, if you've got the time and the stomach for it, I think that can be very educational um, as long as you don't let yourself be indoctrinated, right? I mean, I think it can be, you know, if I if I had the stomach for it, I might spend more time listening to Fox News, but I just yeah. don't have the stomach for yeah. it. And, you know, can I bring up something? Uh, Please, Etta. Steve uh, mentioned, you know, the things that were mentioned were all corporate media. I know personally, I um, read a number of... Um, journalists or writers, historians uh, who are mostly on Substack, you know, they're, they're publishing their own um, research and work. Uh, Heather Cox Richardson is one. Um, Judd Legum of Popular Information is another. Our Hubble, um, oh, um, well, it used to be Press Run, but um, Steve, maybe you will appreciate there are some people, journalists, who have found that, um, you know, the, the corporate um, media, they were having problems and weren't feeling like all the questions were being asked or some of the decisions made weren't right. And so there are some strong voices out there 
that are really questioning that. And that's that for me, I mean, you know, you can only take in so much news. And so I tend to have to give myself a diet of not too much, but um, I, I'm trying to look not just as uh, Steve was kind of suggesting, not just the corporate media, but some other people who are questioning what the corporate media is and actually doing good journalistic um, work and, and, you know, ha don't, they don't have the agenda that, um, you know, the big corporate media has perhaps. Okay. Now, um, Justin, I know you're up there, Doug Binkley, you know, you're up there, but Jill's been aching for a question and Doug is aching for a question since they haven't gone yet. Justin, I'll put you third. No, that's, that's no problem at all. Okay. So, uh, Jill, you had your hand down, but you had your hand up. Please join us in our, our conversation tonight, unless she left. No, no, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Jill. Uh, you, you're, you're now unmuted, Jill, so go ahead. I am. Okay. I just wondering if um, Candace has heard of Trusted News Initiative. Mm -hmm. I don't know that when I, we, we actually have a list of, of fact checking sources, but let me look up. No, no, it is not a fact check. It's so what, a, so. I, I would just tell you what it is. Okay. If you, I think you should look it up for yourself later, not now. It's uh, December, 2019, the trusted news initiative as um, if you look up, it's, I think it was announced by the BBC. It is. That, it's, uh... that, that <clears throat> the point is, all the large news organizations agreed that they would not say anything to cause vaccine hesitancy. So I know that um, this is your source, is you've mentioned your names and certain organizations that belong to Trusted News Initiative. So it, it's um, true. I do believe that the, the mainstream media is, it does have an agenda. And there are suppressed people who are reasonable people. Um, I, for instance, listen to the FLCCC, that's Frank Lynn, uh, CCC is in CAT on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. And it's physicians who can no longer speak. They've been, um, and these are very respected, well-published physicians. And they can no longer speak because their voices have been censored. So there is censorship. Um, and I would suggest that you look up online FLCCC and see what kind of people these are who have been censored, who have been removed from their hospitals because they were champions of early treatment. Many of these doctors have been vaccinated um, because they did believe in it and they're doctors. They, they vaccinated their kids with all the vaccines. Now they, are saying though that without early treatment, we can't get past this pandemic. And I, I personally believe that. So I'm just putting my two cents in that there's okay. a lot of very respected physicians who have been censored. And I think you should be aware of the Trusted News Initiative and, and the uh, um, agreement among mainstream media not to cause vaccine hesitancy. And that's all. Thank you. Right, Can I ask you a qu just a quick question? What do you mean? What's the early treatment? I, I just want to understand where you're coming from. Oh, well, okay. I'll tell you where I'm coming from. My husband in 2020 was very sick and, and we tested, he tested twice positive. We made sure, okay, he has COVID. We called our Northwestern physician and they said, we can't help you at all. Um, I said, well, I've heard of vitamin D. And they're like, well, we don't treat people until they need to go to the emergency room 
when you're what and I was talking for him when your husband turns blue or he can't breathe then you go to the ER and I'm like no yeah so There's that's not wrong with your medical system yeah so um, that that's when I that's when I listened to the FLCCC and they have a protocol it involves it involves nutrients it involves I see thousands okay. of uh, ivermectin and other drugs that have been maligned but it it did certainly work for him and i they they have studies with excuse um, me this is a is there a question no, i so, asked, no, you know what i asked her to explain and so now I, I understand i just wanted to make so sure that, i understood the point and i've got the i've got the uh trusted news initiative pulled up and i will look at it so thank, thank you. you hey Next up will be Doug Binkley. So go ahead, Doug. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, um, we can hear you, Doug. Yeah, I, I appreciate you two women. And um, boy, you have <laughs> a much stronger fortitude in trying to be positive than I have. I cannot, uh, um, I mean, my question actually is about Friday nights. Um, I am at, I'm tempted to get on uh, next Friday uh, how many people usually do, and um, and um, uh, well, um, I would just um, um, uh, how much of a um, possibility would I have to make a difference? Do you think? Uh, uh, because I, I I mostly do um, have a negative, such a negative view of these people that are trying to hurt um, that um, um, uh, well, just uh, see if you can respond about the Friday night thing. Yeah, it's not it's actually not Friday night. It's Friday, eleven o'clock in the morning, still twelve thirty. Oh, and okay. So it's um it's uh, an hour and a half, and the amount of people who attend kind of varies. Sometimes it's as little as four or five. Sometimes maybe up to twenty. And um, what we do is we practice making true sandwiches. We see what people are interested in because some people are like, "Hey, I wanted to learn how to use Twitter," so we'll go through how to set up a Twitter account. And then some people say, well, I want to do a true sandwich about something they're hearing about and we'll work with them on that. So, and, and I, I do think it helps because one of our, one of our, you know, some people are, they just say they, it's, it's frustrating. You want to just call people out for being stupid, but what we found out is that doesn't work. It just turns people off. So what we try to do is be more inclusive and say, Hey, we're all in this together but here's some misinformation out there and here's why that misinformation's out there and here's what we want to have happen. And you know, you may completely disagree with our vision, but, that, but we try to do it in a positive way. So if you are frustrated um, in how to deal with people who are driving you crazy or misinformation, um, we may be able to help. And I will put the link to that registrate and you're welcome to join us. Uh, right. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that conflicts with Tom Hartman. I'm really sorry, but maybe okay. I will be, okay. be able to <laughs> are, are my available? Uh, addiction. Those, we don't record those because those are just kind of like workshops. But uh -huh. okay. All right. Um, I, I, I'm okay. I'm going to go. I know Justin Tucker's up, Charles up, and Bob Matter's up. I'm going to go next with Bob Matter, but I have a quick question too. Do you ladies do like a 20 minute presentations of this true sandwich? Because I would be very interested in having you present in one of our Toastmasters groups on this topic. Uh, they do meet on Zoom. They do have a hybrid meeting. They meet at Harper College. I can fill you in more details after the after the thing. But because uh, I know several people, um, at least in my Toastmasters group, would be interested in this truth sandwich technique. Why don't you send them an email afterwards? I will do so, Charlie. Then okay. Yeah, and we call the next speaker. Okay. I'm sorry, Candace. We do have a shorter version, so we okay. can do it. Yes. Good, because uh, I think this might be interesting for one of our nights at, at another venue. Okay, Bob Matter, I'm going to let you go next since you haven't had a question yet. And then I'll yeah, I was just ahead. I was going to ask our two speakers if they would help me uh, uh, create a a uh, truth sandwich about genders. Let's say there's there's there are, there are two genders, male and female. That's true. We know that if we dig up bones, whether they're a year old or if they're a million years old, 
and we grind them up and look at the DNA, there's either going to be an X and a Y or or two X's or Y or whatever it is. So we know that there's totally there's always been, always will be two genders, and that and that the danger of this uh, of this gender dysphoria, of course, the letting you know, a four year old uh, declare that they're a member of the opposite sex and then having the government force uh, parents to give them a sex change operation or something. It's just bizarre as hell. It's somebody that you would not let pick what they want to eat for their own lunch. Let them go in there and decide what gender they are. So this is terribly damaging. So let's make truth sandwich. How do we go about doing that? And the, and the basis of this is that there are two genders, male and female. Anything else is a psychological problem. Uh, you know, it's a gender dysphoria. It needs to be taken care of by a psychiatrist, not a surgeon. So how, let's let's do this. How do we do it? What? How do we start? We start with the premise first. There are two genders. Then, yeah, then what? And that's, but that's a premise. If you want to work on a true sandwich, that's fine. I think that many people would disagree with you about um, the genders and cross-sexing, as, some, as someone put in there. There's intersex, and there's people who are born with. There are people who are born with. Uh, you know, hermaphrodites and there's all sorts well, of there, there's a, there's there are yeah well those are birth defects essentially but aside from that I mean but the normal everyday person you're either gonna be a male or a female. Well you and know you know when what? you look at your bone look at the DNA in the bones you go back to those chromosomes you're either gonna have male chromosomes or you're gonna have female chromosomes. Well, there actually there's I not, actually have a nephew who's got that. there's you've heard of the extra well it's scientifically there are some complications, but that's but that's uh, that's probably beside the point. I understand you you and a lot of other people. Nephew. Share. Uh, so so, so let's know, build the truth sandwich. Well, How do we do um, that? Well, first off, I want to say I'm not building a truth sandwich with you because we don't have a shared truth. If we had what well, what we would have to have is some kind of shared value. And hey, how do we do that? um I don't know that we we have it because it sounds like your value is it must be a or b and and they, and that's exactly it. right that's what that's what's that's just okay. what the science well, says so i'm, gotta, I'm gotta, not uh, accepting that so i'm not going to be able to build a true sandwich with you because i don't accept you're not, that a, as you're not accepting um no so uh, you know when you're talking to people though um, you know, as I'm, I'm hearing you, and a lot of you, I'm hearing you, um, you folks are so aggressive and so negative that you're just hammering you're not- me and pushing me away. So uh, if you're trying to get me to perhaps come to your side, you've got to try a different way. Because you- Yeah, be nice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you know, and I, I, I appreciate that you folks feel passionate about. Well, things. see, I, I mean, just that- smoked. I just smoked you out. That's what I did, because you're not looking at objective truth. Your, your, your uh, source uh, background. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, what I was just saying. What I was just saying is. Can, can I finish what I was saying? What I was just saying is that uh, it, I guess I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, if, I, if I'm not uh, going to be able to. Let her let her finish, please, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Her, uh, okay. This is about communicating. Um, like I said, I appreciate, um, you know, passion. I appreciate somebody caring deeply about something. But the lack of positivity, the sense of possibly being attacked, you are not going to change other people's minds with that approach. And at the core of what we're trying to do, we're not necessarily changing people's point of view, but we're asking them to reconsider, perhaps. And with a sledgehammer, I'm not going to do that. And I have to say, unfortunately, some of you have a lot of sledgehammers in your back pocket, and that's just not effective. I mean, I'm not trying to be critical, but I, you know, that's the bottom line for me. You know what? It's mentally, people mentally sick 
who change gender and I'm agree I'm I'm agree with what Batman says. Batman no, Batman absolutely right. Let her finish. Let her finish. Let her finish. Let her finish. No, but matter absolutely right. Let her finish. Let her finish. Okay, now. About this matter, you know. Okay, Lana, did you have a question since you popped up? Justin and Charles have gone before, so if you have a question, oh. uh, um, you know, we would be more than happy to hear it. Just small remark. It's mentally sick when people try to be gay or whatever. Yeah, my next question. This is or lesbians, a whatever. It's this sick. It's not a question. Sickening. Charlie. Um, I'm a right. lesbian. Am I sick? Yeah, you are sick mentally. Yeah, yeah, you're going it's there. not okay. only my opinion, so, you know? Stop, disconnect it, please. All right, now, no, no. okay. Uh, okay. And I'm a medical field. Okay, no. Lana, let's move on to the next question. It's Charles and Justin Tucker again, since they've been both contributing quite a bit. Uh, Justin, I'm going to let you go first, and then we'll go to Charlie. I wish you guys would start asking about methodology instead of trying to promote your own agendas, because these women have obviously got a lot of techniques in uh, how to persuade people and how to verify sources. So, Justin, please go ahead. So, from an epistemological standpoint, this is all very interesting. Uh, for one, who fact checks the fact checkers? Uh, I think uh, it sounded like Candace earlier said you guys rely on experts. Um, now, relying on experts, I don't think counts as truth. I think that's faith. Uh, and um, so Etta also mentioned that that's not her truth. I guess it, if I, that's correct in regards to Bob. So, uh, um, I, so, so I, if I take it that you guys believe in objective truth and then a subjective truth as well, and I'm I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I I would I would actually like to re ask Bob's question perhaps more delicately because I think that that's a a question that should be uh, addressed uh, because I think that a lot of people in the middle hearing that they're you know when people say that there's no such thing as two genders or or you know there's more than two genders. I think that that might uh, turn some people off. So I, I, I think that, you know, for, you know, let's, I would like to just ask Bob's question, I guess, again, uh, more delicately and, and, you know, as if somebody from the middle who may be skeptical of some of the more radical gender notions that are out there today, how would you, you know, explain truth of, you know, the truth in that situation to somebody. Well, it's interesting. You're talking, you're, you've raised a whole lot of issues and the, you know, the, whether the truth about whether or not they're two genders, um, you know, I think if, the, if you dig up bones and you can say that most of the time you can identify which chromosome, I think there's a lot more to gender than just whether or not they have an X or a Y chrome, you know, X or Y chromosomes, right? I think it's, it's far more complicated than that. So, you know, if you start with, that's what a lot of people do. You start with your own assumption um, that there are two, you know, there are two sexes and it's a whole lot more complicated than that. It's so how many sexes are there then? <laughs> let's move on. To no, okay, just I, I, let's talk, answer the question. No cross talk. Um, right. uh, can I say something? Go right ahead. Uh, you're answering Justin's question. No, I'm not answering Justin's question. Okay, I am okay. just saying, I thought... I came to a safe place. I oh. was sharing something that I felt passionately about and was willing to. I thought you had invited us because right. you were interested in that. I have been told that I'm mentally ill. I don't find that very pleasant. And I'm not willing to continue to be in this medium because you know, gays and lesbians against Lana, the, not, you know, Lana. I, I, I am against, it's against the nation. I am leaving, and I wish you all well. But and I'm sorry I, about this. You know, uh, this hey, you know, please enjoy your discussions with each other, but I will not be part of it. Thank you. Goodbye. 
this, that's terrible what they did to you, Ed. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, Candace, are you willing to continue for a while? I mean, yes, I will, but I completely appreciate Ed's point. I mean, no, no, and I understand we have to have no personal attacks here, but, uh, you know, um, this is a feisty group. So if you uh, get it, there, you'll see them in the rebuttal period. We'd like you to comment at the end, and I'd like to see you come along for a while. I know that. Um, I've been I've been the victims of myself of this many a times, but I I pretty much handle it. Now the thing is, it the, the college is a feisty group, okay, and sometimes people do get a little out of line. And Lana, uh, I mean, you know, we're we're dealing with stuff like this. Okay, Charlie, you got the next question. Please go ahead. Yeah, I uh, as a librarian, I, I, we always relied on mainline publications, New York Times, Washington Post, the big new big city dailies. Uh, we we or we stocked books that were put out by reputable publishers, which had been reviewed by librarians and other media sources, the uh, book reviewers. And now all of a sudden there's a whole world of stuff, I'll call it stuff, I wouldn't even call it information that people are relying on. And I don't, I think the Truth Brigade is trying to deal with this. I mean, what I don't fully understand why people place, like here a Zoom meeting of who knows who, once a week is like the truth. Hey, who what's knows the question, on that Charlie? Zoom meeting? Uh, Justin, please. Justin, finish. will you please for once, let me finish. Is it okay if I finish? I mean, where in the world do people suddenly accept all of this uh, do a ditty as information? I mean, and, and these podcasts are ridiculous. I got to go to a Zoom meeting where who knows who's attending it. I think I'm getting valid. Well, I mean, I, I don't. Have we have we gotten rid of all criteria or what? That's all. All right, uh, Margaret, please answer the question if you'd like. Uh, uh, you're muted, Margaret. My apologies. You're muted. I don't have a question. No, no. I, were you were you were in response uh, to our speaker in response to Charlie there. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? I'm sorry, Candace. I'm sorry. Did you okay. want to respond to that? My apologies. No, no, no. I was just going I, I, I was confused for a minute there, Margaret. And, you know, technology has made it very much more difficult. In some ways, it's great because there's an access to a lot more information than there used to be, but trying to sort through all that information is extremely difficult. It's, it's quite the dilemma. Okay. Um, at this point, you know, um, you know what? It's very clearly it's males and females. Uh, that Lana, and, you know, and it's one not, pull at a time, please. Lana, we're gonna have to uh, just, just, just. Uh, we're okay. She, it's she left. I, La, La, Lana is doing every week. She's doing this thing, and and that will be clear to her. Okay, this is not a place for you to come out with your own version and insult people. Because you've been doing every single week. If you do not like, please stay quiet or don't come. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, but you cannot you cannot insult people every single week and bring out same topic every single week. If you do not like, if you do not do not have knowledge to understand, and you do not read enough thing, then that's your problem, not our problem. I'm sorry. Okay. Like I said, one fool at a time and no personal attacks. All right, Justin, you got another question yet? Again. Yes. So, uh, so going back to like, what is truth? Um, uh, so like, uh, in, uh, so what is truth? So no, if, truth. if we are going to say that, uh, that there are more than two genders is misinformation. Justin, what standard do you use are you using to judge that if i were really going to take on that issue i would be looking at the scientific research on it 
And I can tell, you know, there's, there's at some point, there's no point in having this discussion because people are coming into this with a completely biased, it, it's, it's part of the advice I gave, which is people who are on the far side of an issue, there's no point in arguing with them. You know, I can sit here and if you're gonna, you know, do I think scientifically? I, I asked the question about how do you, uh, I, 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 my question was about what, what's your standard of truth? I'm not sure what I what you mean by what's your standard of truth. If 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 Candace, just I think what he's asking about your methodology about how you find the truth a little bit more. Yeah, well, and like I said, you go to depending on what the issue is. But let's let's take something that's not quite so emotionally. Well, I could be wrong. This could be very emotionally laden. Climate change. Okay, there are people who cling to the idea that we do not have man-made climate change and that there, or that it's not risky and dangerous. And I go to the sources, the scientific sources and people I trust because I can't redo all the research in the world or go read all the research in the world. But when 98% or whatever the percentage is, it's very, very high of scientists who study this for a living say that man-made climate change is causing the problems that we're having now, then yes, even though I didn't do the research myself, even though I didn't get a PhD in, you know, in, in, in metro meteorology, um, I do believe that that is what's going on. When I see the Novas and uh, read the articles and look at you know the the. How do you know those are accurate? Uh, Justin, let her finish, please. If someone presents enough information to me, and 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 so, am I going to say, oh, somebody's making up the fact that ninety eight percent of scientists? If you look at all those sources, and you find that there's across those sources people agree that 98% of scientists think this is what's going on, then yes, I believe that. And no, I do not have time or energy to go and try to redo that research. But if you think that all, you know, so maybe, I mean, how would you, how do you counter that? If, if nine, if there's 98%, how do you say, how do you- So when it's an appeal to an authority, essentially. When it comes to science, yes, I need to rely on authority. Yeah, because I do not have that scientific training. Okay. So I look at, you know, you want, you go to the doctor, do you question everything the doctor says? Yeah, do I believe in challenging authority? Yes, but when you go to the doctor, they've been through all that training. You you better have a little bit of faith in what the doctor's saying. Or, you know, and if, you to, if you go get the second opinion and the third opinion and the fourth opinion, and they all say the same thing, you know, when do you get to, when do you get to say, okay, that's probably what's going on. All you right. Know? As, let's as, go to, uh, let's go to rebuttals, Tim. I think you're right. I think it's time. Okay, Bob, you're starting to let's, screen let's share. Start gotta... our, let's thank our speaker. All right, speakers. Bob, not, not quite yet. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get, we'll All get right. to that. Bob, I'm going to stop your participation. Let's go to your rebuttal and we'll go to rebuttals in a minute and I'll let you go first. Okay. I'll give oh, everybody okay. who's got rebuttals tonight. I know, Bob, you got one. Raj. Raj has one. Who else? Doug Binkley's got one. Yeah, put me on, Ron. Uh, Ron Betag, okay. Uh, so I got Bob, Raj, Doug, and Ron. Hey, uh, Ron, what do you do professionally? Uh, Justin, 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 hang on a minute. All right, so we got uh, Doug, so I got Bob, Raj, Doug, Ron and Justin, who else? Anybody else? Carl. Charlie. Okay. And I'll probably have one myself. Um, at least at least at least towards the end. Maybe I'll go before Charlie does because I know he likes to be at the end. All right. I'm gonna go over one more time on rebutters. Bob, Raj, Doug, Ron, Justin, me, and Charlie. I'm going to take your hands down and I'll stick to that uh, thing. If anybody else wants to rebut, I'll be more than happy to put you on the list. And uh, I'll give each of you guys about, uh, I'll say five minutes, each, uh, four minutes each. I'll keep a clock here handy um, on, on the thing. I can put one. I don't know if I, okay. So um, Bob, 
Uh, if you're ready to uh, go with your rebuttal, uh, please do, and then okay. go ahead and share your screen. Okay. So, well, I think I smoked our our uh, speakers out tonight. Um, that that you know they 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 basically admitted that there is no there is no truth that they have to, they have to find their the, the truth that is permitted, it's basically the democratic uh, line, the party narrative. One party system like they have in China, we have here the American Marxists, the Democratic Party, uh, everything, if it fits that narrative, then it's the truth. And they get that narrative over there from indivisible.org that, you know, and, they get, and, the, and the stated fact is that that that, that allegedly truth finding organization their their objective is to uh mobilize the progressive vote in other words you know get more you know more democrats in office uh and this is how it's been for you know a, a long time and they're they're i guess they're uh they're pretty upset now that elon musk is is buying twitter it looks like uh because you know this is going to put free speech back on the table again and they don't want that. They want to control, you know, our access to the information. That's why, you know, we didn't get to hear about Hunter Biden's laptop during uh, the, the last election. Uh, and it turned out that, that was all true. Um, they, you know, made they made our children wear masks and stay out of school, stay home from school for two years, which has caused untold amounts of harm. When in fact, children were never and still are not impacted adversely by COVID hardly at all. It's like, it's, you know, almost nil. You know, of course, Sweden didn't mask or their kids or keep them home or anything at all. And they're, they're fine. I, I was just looking the other day at the, uh, the national COVID, uh, you know, the government figures. And I wanted to see how things have gone in the last couple of weeks because there was all kinds of liberal uh, belly aching uh, when they they told us we didn't have to wear masks on planes and trains anymore on April 18th and Fauci wanted you know, a couple more weeks to to study this new variant blah 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 and I looked and it's like yeah the, for the last ever since April 18th the the number of COVID deaths have been dropping so you know there was nothing to nothing really to worry about all throughout this whole COVID thing, by the way, you know, it, it was like 79 or 80% of the people that died were already, had already lived past their normal life expectancy anyway. This, this was essentially a disease of the elderly and the infirm, the people that usually die of bad flus anyway. Uh, and for everybody else, it wasn't, you know, quite, quite so bad. Now, I know there was a, there's a few instances in there, but the thing is we, you know, destroyed our economy uh, you know, like we shut so many businesses down, put businesses out of out of business, and, uh, and they printed all this money for these uh, these uh, fraudulent COVID loans, which I'm seeing all over the place now. Um, and it's created this human humongous inflation problem. And we did all that. I think we did, you know, an over overreaction for something that uh, really, you know, we didn't stop to really look at the truth at the data, and we weren't allowed to even discuss it. And it's because of people like this that want to censor. This is essentially censorship. That's what it boils down to. Okay, Bob. Any, any you got less than forty-five seconds. Are you done? I'm done. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, our next three butter is Raj. Go ahead, Raj. Uh, thank you, Tim. The the what you two ladies are doing, you have tremendous qualification. And uh, you are very intelligent. And uh, the the my issue is that that uh, a truth is probably too much to to manage in a, in a that, that name. And so probably the what is the best rebuttal or what is the best alternative? Something you have to work on that when it doesn't doesn't strike people as you are attacking somebody or putting down or doing something in a truth and lie. The, the, what is happening in a world is that 
and I should, I should always happen. There are sometimes good or bad people. Somehow have a leadership quality that convinces everybody, and they take in charge of the society. And when and this thing has happened so many times, and uh, nobody is perfect, but nobody is all bad and nobody is all good. I mean, uh, I did not like Trump, but I like lots of his policies. And uh, but uh, but uh, reaches a point where uh, his his uh, liabilities were so strong that I did not support. I I do not like I do not like so many of Biden's policy, but I I will vote for him again because there are so many things I like about like about him. So 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 person is not good or all good or all bad except very few cases, but uh, we have to manage society and we, we we follow the law and we follow the decision making according to our system. Supreme Court, I think is wrong and it's now controlled by, by some very radical people. And I do not think that they're honorable people, but uh, then uh, conservative people thought about uh, liberal when they were in charge, that they were wrong and they were bad people. So this, this kind of thing goes on and, and we have to figure it out to accept people what they are and uh, move on. The other thing, I think Lana and Robert, I feel very bad, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. I don't want to personally attack, but uh, Bob Robert, he we study it, there is, there is not only a DNA that decides, there is not a, a, a and, or B, on a sex, there are hormones there. And hormone can make your penis so small that it's non-functional. The, the DNA, uh, the, the hormones in the body can make a pregnant child, the uh, woman's ovary non-functional, okay? And this thing happens. And what do you call them? They, then sometime a person can have a, both organs, men and women, okay? It doesn't work. So, so if any variation possible, that is going to happen. Dana comes out of a pure hate of gay people and other people. And I am very uncomfortable about that because unless you want to speak and then you speak, I don't mind. But but you interfere and you just, just force one up upon yeah. us that you hate it. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Raj. Um... I know you guys are giving quite a bit in opinions. Okay, Doug, if you're ready, uh, you got four minutes, so please uh, go ahead and speak. Doug Binkley, you're next on the rebuttals. Doug, if you're yeah, there. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, I've been, uh, I've worked with Indivisible before, uh, Candace, so, so uh, I very, and I very much appreciate what you guys are doing, and I I, I laud you for trying to do things, something positive. This truth sandwich seems like a gimmick uh, to me, uh, but uh, I'm willing to uh, uh, consider it and think it through. Uh, it is a shame that Etta had to leave because of uh, a personal attack. We're not supposed to do that. I don't consider uh, um, that uh, what I, you know, sometimes maybe people think that I'm doing that, but. Um, uh, the fact no, it's, is, not, it's not personal attack. Mana, the fact Mana. is that, the fact is that time. when people are just, you know, saying things that are just so flagrantly untrue, and especially when they're dangerous, I mean, free speech goes so far. And uh, if you're touting stuff like, uh, like Ellen was doing, I mean, saying that 40,000 people died of the virus, I'm sorry she's gone, but I mean, uh, this was looked into by journalists. And if you don't believe any journalist except Tucker Carlson or some <laughs> scum like that, uh, then please. I mean, I could do my Walter Cronkite. This is Walter Cronkite. I'm back from the dead. I've been summoned by good people to explain that you've got to actually have some confidence in facts and you've got to <laughs> stop spouting misinformation you know it's just it's crazy i mean can you imagine um um when i was uh, in school uh we did learn civics we learned about you know uh, a proper what what a proper citizen 
does, and we learned the difference between truth and lies. And uh, and one of the things was about science. I mean, you did, you know, we learned science. I don't know what they what people learn these days. I mean, you know, uh, the Earth is. I mean, we went over it. You know, the Earth is flat, right? I mean, people would say that. But well, how would they explain that the fact of uh, a ship when it was approaching? Uh, over the horizon, you'd first see the crow's nest, then you would see the mast, and then you would see the deck of the ship, and then you'd see the rest of the ship. Uh, can you refute that? Um, a, a professor of mine, when I was getting my physics degree at IIT, I mean, he said, well, uh, there was one, this one student that said that uh, we were living in the inside of the earth, and the sun was really at the center of the earth. And uh, he, he just couldn't get him off of that, that idea. And I thought, well, this, this is so... <laughs> He couldn't seem to get shake him from that crazy nonsense. So, uh, but I mean, when Ellen, uh, when people go to the, I mean, that was just harmless. The guy was just an idiot. But uh, when people do say things like there's 40,000 people died of the vaccine and journalists, real journalists went and found the person that they, one of the persons that they claim died and they had a video, it was Tiffany. And, uh, and I saw the video too, it was on the, on the news, uh, the real news, and, uh, and she didn't die, they found the real person, and, they, and it turned out that she had fainted, but some jerks had this, um, disseminated a, the, the video of her fainting and said that she died, and just was a plain lie, they never uh, tried to investigate whether she really died or not, or even went, you know, even was admitted to the hospital. Maybe she was admitted for a day for observation. This is just, it's so outlandish. When you're, when you're disseminating things that can cause people real harm, that's really where free speech should end. And, um, and uh, we've just got to um, uh, be aware of that. Now, um, uh, Candace, uh, and I'm really, I'm really sorry, sorry Ed, I had to leave this, this uh, forum, which is a supposedly a free speech forum, uh, it's not censorship to say if something is causing active harm, you really shouldn't be saying it, at least on a forum like this, which is similar to Twitter. I mean, the organizers can say at a certain point, we're not going to accept garbage that can cause harm, you know, really false lying statements that can cause harm that have been uh, examined by scientists or genuine journalists. Now, okay, oh, who's a genuine journalist? Well, clearly not Fox News because they don't actually report real news, and that can be, and that's been documented so many times. And uh, they they don't even show the uh, parts of the of the coup where the uh, where the crazy um, uh, Trumpers with their flags uh, were. You know, they try to show something that seems innocuous and lie that it wasn't a real coup, a real attempt to unseat the government and, and, um, and uh, steal democracy away from us. So um, I'm, I'm just about done, I guess. I hope I will um, be able okay. to get on on Friday. So uh, maybe you guys can give me some tips about how to go after these people um, in quote, a positive way. I, I don't know if that's possible. Okay, I'm it, done. It, it, it is, thank you um, there. Ron, you're next. Uh, if you want to give, I'll give you four minutes. I uh, let um, Doug go over just a tad bit because he was on a roll. So, uh, Ron, go ahead, please. Unmute. You know how to unmute, Ron? Ron, you're muted. Uh, okay, you're, you're good. Right, you're okay. good. Well, I think one of the biggest problems we have to look at in the overall picture is that uh, we have a culture, especially among the young people who don't think beyond two at a maximum eight minutes. I, I think we've had a number of um, examples that people can readily think about where the truth was not determined by what library you went to and who you went back to. You can take the case of Kepler and the reordering of the uh, solar uh, orbits. He didn't go to a book. He figured that out over decades. And Einstein didn't, you know, totally transform the physics. So to measure truth, and this is where I kind of uh, look at the statement that said, we have to have a common truth before we can talk. Well, if you look at a uh, Nicholas Acuza, on which the whole Renaissance and a lot of the scientific structures in the nation state were founded, even our own constitution, he had a, a notion of the co coincidence of opposites. And it's really that concept that ended the, um, 
with the uh, League, uh, the Treaty of Westphalia, and the, you know, the uh, religious wars, because the only way they solved that was people agreeing that revenge couldn't be the subject, the benefit of the other had to be the subject. So you found a subject that was above the particular notions of truth. Now, what I'm laying this out for is because it's only from that level, if you look at the, the entire process, you know, we brought up a couple of things, say like the, um, the uh, environment as the earth warming, the uh, globalization, while well, it's been changing from global warming, global cooling, the there is a figure of 98 percent of the population or the scientific population agreeing that there is climate change that's a long subject and distance from saying that all scientists say it's human caused the biggest cause is the sun the other cause major cause is the galactic radiation and the bulk of the scientists do not put that much claim in man-made carbon in fact, you've got global climate change going on in planets right now. There are, there are no human beings there. So that's not my subject. My subject is how do we actually figure out how to think? And you take the whole climate change and you look at what's going on is under climate change, they're moving to tax coal, gas, and oil as a cash flow in the Great Reset. They're putting up bubbles of wind and solar, financial bubbles, to hold together this system. One of the major objectors to this is Russia, China. They, uh, they didn't go to the uh, Glasgow summit. India went and said, we're not going to commit suicide. So their effort to actually police this bailout scheme, which is also what's behind this war being orchestrated against Russia. So how do you figure all this out? And to answer a question that was put out of context earlier, I organized full time with Linda LaRouche. I put a link in the, the chat which is an access to our search engine and people can go in there and put in any subject or any battle and you can get what we wrote on it over the last 40 years. So people can do research. You also have an ability to get in touch with any time if you have questions on it. But we had a forum that was setting up under President Trump, you know, what's his name? Um, the scientist from Princeton, I'm blocking his name right now was gonna be the head of a forum cabinet level to have a public debate that was shut down. So the, the question is you wanna to have, to, have to have a dialogue. Right now we have to have negotiations with the Russians and all parties like we've called for in this international summit for a new architecture for development. You've gotta actually come to this Treaty of Westphalia level where you're talking truth and you determine what the truth is, not on opinion, but what is actually there physically in reality. And the fact that we're going through various kinds of cycles, we bob up and down in, in through the, the arms of the galaxy. That's the major change. It's got cycles of 62 million years. So the question here is you're not gonna get a child who's got an eight minute attention span or a two minute attention span on Twitter to figure that out and to put them on the spot to say they gotta make all these other decisions. We as adults, have to start acting like adults and say, how do I bring the bigger question in? Right now we're facing a financial crash and a world war being orchestrated to protect that crash from going in the wrong direction out of their control. We should freeze that paper and earmark credit at the $20 trillion level into the physical economy. And had we had a health system, then this disease jump would not have become a pandemic. We closed down the whole Hill Burton hospital system in the United States under, you know, coming out of the, uh, the Nixon period, and we've never built it around the world. So we really kind of come to our senses, or we're killing ourselves with stupidity. Jim, can I say something? Hello? Not your turn to speak, I don't think. Lana, Lana we'll give you a rebuttal slot. After Ron's yeah, done, after Justin I, is next on the rebuttals, I'll give you a chance to rebut, Lana. I just want to apologize if uh, it was misunderstanding. It was not okay. personal attack, okay? I'm apologizing. All, all right. Misunderstanding. All right. All right. All right. But I want to say a couple of words. Crazy. Okay. Now, uh, Justin, you're up next, so go ahead. I uh, regret Etta having to leave, um, and I totally condemn uh 
the remarks that were said earlier. Uh, I do not have a sledgehammer in my back pocket. That is fake news. Um, and I may ask tough questions. That's not uh, evidence that I'm. Uh, that's not evidence that I am right wing or a truth or you know Trumper or whatever. Um, but I, I think that there are some, you know, I, I think that, uh, I don't know, epistemologically, I don't know. I, I've been thinking about this question a lot. Like, how do we know what is truth? And um, I think it's objective reality for the most part. Um, and objective reality is is kind of the basis for language because we attach symbols and sounds to things that we see that we can communicate with other people um so yeah i mean it's it's just been a really interesting sort of thing and i i, I regret i wish edda would have stuck around i i I don't think that this was really unsafe. This is virtual. Um, I, only, I, I can understand how she might not want to be here uh, if people are saying she is ill mentally. Um, but um, I, I hope Etta can perhaps uh, learn to tough it out maybe. Um, I'd hope to see her come back and discuss this further. Um, it's a little hard to be told you're mentally ill. Well, you know, I'm overweight and I've got glasses and, you know, I've heard a lot of mean things in my, my day. Um, so I get it. Um, you know, like it sucks. Human beings are awful people and they lie and they're fallible and uh, they are uh, petty and selfish. Um, and as you guys may know, I'm doing the debate, Jesus was a socialist. So I've gotten to read the gospels again in, in, uh, in preparation of this. And my, one of my all time favorite passages is, uh, I think it's in John, if I'm not mistaken, is, uh, when Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? It's really great. Uh, one, one great scene in, in one of the great classics of literature. Um, and Ron, I really dig your office setup. Where do you, what do you do? Okay, enough. All right, are you done, uh, Justin? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm done. Um, thanks, okay. thanks, Candice, and and tell Etta thanks, and I hope she can come back. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think I my advice to you guys would just be to maybe you guys should try to uh, convince uh, some of the you know fringe opposite people because you know you, you if you you guys share the same objective reality. So <laughs> if you got if you're gonna be the uh, arbiters of what is truth. You have to reflect that. And I don't think that shared, I don't think that, uh, I don't think, you know, subjective truth is, or, you know, my, you know, you no. get what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, but okay. Ron, I dig your office set up. I, I want to know what, I'm, I'd love to know what Are you, you do. Done all right, all right, all right. Well, it's, off, it's off the subject. Yeah, there's, I put my email in the slot. Come on, let's go okay. next. One. All right, now we're done. I'm anybody else want to do a rebuttal? Otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna I go, then Cherry's gonna go. Yeah, can I say a couple of words, please? <clears throat> Excuse go me. Go ahead, friend. Lana. Very quickly, very briefly. Okay. First of all, it was not personal attack. I I'm talking about in general. Okay. So look at guys. Nature. Nature. Male and female, right? So by nature, people place here to be attracted. Okay, I'm not criticized. I just said my own opinion. And it's not only my opinion, you know. I'm working in medical field, okay? And I'm very close to psychology field. So what I try to tell you, by nature, 
male supposed to be attracted to female. Female supposed to be attracted to male. If I'm not even touch this topic, I'm just talking about this is going against the nature. If women attract to women and men attract to men, and I'm not criticizing, it's not my problem. I'm so appreciated. I'm really not even close to the subject. You know, I just right. try to say, think about it. You know, but it, 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 they go against nature. These lesbians and gays. Okay. You don't know what nature is. All right, Charlie, okay. let her finish. It's okay. a rebuttal okay. time. Okay. Okay. It, it's against, and it's not nice, and it's not right. What we, what people teaching in school, poor kids, how how they, you know, these kids like develop, they kids growing up, and male, kid, male, female, kid, you know, student, female, and they're supposed to have families, they're supposed to have pleasure from relationships, and those lesbians and gays. It's, it's, they just go against nature and it's not healthy and it's not right. Okay, and again, it's not only my opinion. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for- All right, Lana, we're you. done. All right, yeah, Vicky, you, you wanna do a rebuttal now before I go? Un unmute, Vicky. Actually, yes. Um, go ahead, you got four minutes. I don't understand against nature. Are you saying, homosexuality doesn't exist in the animal kingdom and isn't the animal kingdom what you're talking nature? about i'm Lana, not talking about the animal i'm talking Lana. about oh, human you have to be opposite opposite uh, you know gender yeah. you, she's you muted she's I muted have had it ah. with Lana. i have had it i'm ah. totally sympathetic understand. to the speaker who left? If we can't keep a civil tongue in our head, then I, I don't think this college really needs to exist. And because Tim and Charlie have worked so hard, and I'm, working I'm really to... disgusted and I... by your approach, Lana, you don't talk over people, yeah, really? interrupt, okay, I... say a person is say lesbians are mentally ill no, yeah and they are mentally a person says they're in not that in that category opinion. you continue and you say you apologize but you did not apologies like that are worth no more than i think the thought you gave them and i am embarrassed to be part of this wrong. group and i happening. will never recommend this group if you're allowed to talk that way to people i i cannot stand that okay now uh th vicky i appreciate your comments tonight because it, uh, we have had incidences in the past where speakers have left i'll refer you back to about three or four years ago when uh we had one uh, itinerant member anyway, enough said. All right, I'm gonna give a quick, anybody else wants to do a rebuttal real quick? Well, before I go into mine and then Charlie will do his. Okay, I'm gonna give myself a couple of minutes here. <coughs> what, we're do, what we're looking at now is the age old problem of fake news and, <coughs> and truth and it's been, a, Part of the conversation as far back as the birth of the free press. If we go into a something on the outs, on outlines on the historical view of the progress of the human mind, President John Adams scribbled a cutting note, writing in that section where the French philosopher predicted that the free press would advance knowledge and create a more informed public. Adams scoffed. There has been more error propagated by the press in the last 10 years then in a hundred years before 18, 1798, he wrote at that time. That charge feels shockingly modern where we have to, where, where we have written the sentiment of 2018, not that at the turn of the 19th century. It's easy to imagine in 112 characters, he might've tweeted it instead. While Chinese monks were block printing the, Di the Diamond Sutra as early as 868 AD and the German printer Johannes 
Gutenberg develop a method of movable type in the mid 1400s. It took until the enlightenment for, for the free presses we know today to be born. Historian Kate, Caitlin Carter drew the attention of Adams's private note at the American Historical Association's annual meeting concerning early America and fake news. A lot of things we talk about today, we talk about as unprecedented. It's important to look back and see how these same concerns and issues have been raised at many points throughout history, going back as early as the 1640s, partisan notes and broadsides and pamphlets published in England and, col and colonial America were setting precedents for what would become a common practice at the 18th century, writes David A. Copeland in the idea of a free press, the enlightenment and its unruly legacy. Fake news, as it turns out, is not a recent phenomenon and so on and so forth. But we've probably seen examples in our daily news themes all the time. And, you know, it was Pulitzer and uh, the other guy, I'm sorry, I'm trying, I'm, I'm in the late 17, 1880s, 1890s in the, in the, uh, thirst for um, newspaper circulation. There were two rivals. I think one was Pulitzer and one was um, uh, Hearst. Hearst. They were um, trying to go back and forth with outrageous claims in the news and what is truth. And they were basically trying to uh, boost their circulation. And in a lot of cases today, we're seeing that same old thing come out on the internet. It's just that the public around 17, I mean, 1890 demanded that there be some truth in journalism. And that's where the standards for journalistic integrity came around for a while. And because we had just three networks and radio uh, and, and a gatekeeper for the news for so many years before the democratization of news that came along with the internet, it's, it's not surprising that we have these things happen today. And that uh, sometimes going back in history and that insistence of the public for journalistic integrity might just do uh, get rid of a lot of this stuff on the internet. Now, I'm not saying that Candace has tried her best to make sure that, uh, you know, the truth gets out. She's talked about some techniques and tactics, but it's like tonight, uh, most of us here at the College of Complexes uh, go with that old, old proverbs uh, the fool is not interested in understanding, but only in the revealing of his own mind. Mm -hmm. And certainly many minds were revealed here tonight. I myself, uh, I'm a conservative Christian. I'm going to church every Sunday. And, you know, where do I stand on all these gender issues and everything else? I could get into it, but it's not in the best interest of the college for me to get into those views tonight. First off, I don't condemn people for what they believe in. It's up to them where they choose, you know, God made us all a certain way. We're all sinners and we all choose to do our own thing. And, uh, you know, it, it, Jesus said, love one another. Um, anyway, the bottom line is this is not new. This has been throughout history. And if you look at some of the stuff, even on the internet with fake news going back, Charlie did do a good presentation on it at, at one of the past college of complexes on 7117. And that's when we were live and we were, I believe we were still at the, uh, well, I, I do believe we were still at the hilltop at that point, but we did do a good job on, on examining that issue quite a bit. And if you also remember back to, um, I gave a good speech on what, you know, when about a week before Trump went into office and was told by my friend, Paul Racino, what Donald Trump could learn from the victory of the Chicago Cubs. And uh, I did do a good presentation. There's been many a times that uh, we've all gone in here. Now this forum has basically uh, stayed the same, except when you meet everybody in person, they uh, tend to be a little bit more restrained. Anyway, Candace, thank you for your presentation tonight. Uh, I do wish your friend would have stuck around because sometimes we do get a little unruly, but Again, this place, I honestly think that proverb does too. The fool is not interested in understanding, but only in the revealing of his own mind. And here you saw the process of many minds being revealed tonight. So again, um, that's my rebuttal. Charlie, you'll get your rebuttal. And Candice, you'll get the last word. So Charlie, please go ahead. All right. First of all, I want to thank Emma and Candice for a nice presentation. 
I want to thank the Truth Brigade for what they're trying to do. Commend your efforts uh, to uh, disseminate the truth and you've come up with the methodology that you think works. We have another method here at the college. I'd like to think we're trying to arrive at the truth. Doesn't look like we're succeeding terribly. <laughs> but nevertheless, the college is open to the public and we don't have qualifications. We don't maintain memberships and we've never thrown anybody out and probably should have, but we're open to the public and the free discussion of debate. Uh, we do say no personal attacks. Unfortunately, some people don't seem to be able to inculcate that very simple little rule. Uh, I'll be eclectic as usual. First of all, I heard a totally incorrect, by the way, incorrect thing that uh, pamphlets were alternative to the newspapers. And that's absolutely not true. As far as I know, in my, in the history of printing and publishing, uh, pamphlets were an alternative to the book, which required, and a pamphlet is, is 49 pages or less. It depends how books are printed in those days. Two, four, uh, eight, 16, 32 pages and so forth. That, and they, and they, you could do a single stitch and it'd be an alternative to books, which were rather, relatively expensive for the day and well beyond the reach of any, most people. So uh, that's why they established libraries, public libraries, um, Franklin did because uh, they simply couldn't afford private books, but that's where pamphlets came about. Um, you know, regarding the truth, uh, we were talking about vaccinations here, and I even inquired of the speakers, the anti-vax crowd, because I did a search and then I found out at the very same day it was reported that 15,000 people perished from getting vaccinated. And then right below it or next to just about 40,000 people had perished. And I was somewhat curious how, how there could be such a disparity of thousands of people in the same day, uh, which led me to believe that perhaps the people were not more willing to get out things like you're talking about, post things without any, any criteria. Um, and then again, tonight, at the same presentation, I don't know if anybody noted this, but we were told in the same presentation, the same program, that 40,000 physicians are against vaccinations. And then it grew to 70,000 physicians. And then it grew to 300,000. Well, <laughs> this was in the same program tonight which is amazing, uh, incremental growth in this year. Uh, I'm not, I'm sorry, I, I'll go switch to another thing. I don't know if I wanna pay attention. To, sorry, Ron, good to see you. But I'm not certain if I would listen to the LaRouche Foundation on any ecological issues. They have their plan to dig a new Mississippi River in the West, which I find to be incredibly anti-ecological project. I mean, we've got one Mississippi River and I don't think we need a, another one, uh, but maybe, please don't take that as a personal attack. Um, let, let's see now, the other thing that's amazing about my friend Bob Matter is he's come up with this either or category of sexual orientation Yet for weeks, we kept hearing over and over again about a bell-shaped curve. And I would think that when it comes to human sexuality, that everybody would fall in line someplace on a bell-shaped curve. But suddenly, he's abandoned that whole thing of bell-shaped curve, and now it's rigid categories whatsoever. Now, the whole thing, that came up on this, and the college did recognize it, at least I did, was that early in the Trump administration, there was something called fake news. This is news to me as a librarian. I said, what in the world is fake news? 
And as it turns out, the Trump administration on their very first press conference couldn't tell the truth about the inauguration. They actually just made up stuff. <laughs> and when I spoke at the college on July 1st, we had three solid months of the Trump administration and there were, they started keeping a tab. They already had 3,000 questionable statements issued by the administration. And if you seem to recollect, the media would question them about it. So they started disparaging the mass media, the, the trusted sources of information. And they also began questioning the government itself, which is amazing claiming there was some sort of conspiracy against them as well from within. So in terms of their cornering the truth, uh, it was Trump or nothing at all. Now they have absolutely no criteria whatsoever for the truth. Uh, and it seem, doesn't seem to bother in the slightest his followers, which is singularly amazing. They're willing to believe anything. They call it spin that came up in the election for every negative thing that was reported regarding Trumpism. There was a spin put on it, stretching the truth on very occasions or totally obliterating it. But you had to have a counter, a spin to any accurate statement of failure or mistakes and so forth. Now, to carry this on into like the COVID situation and to say that the media, the medical community and the government and everybody is mistaken regarding a pandemic is fallacious and dangerous altogether. Uh, okay, Charlie, that's wrap ridiculous. It up. But anyhow, that's basically it. Yeah, at the college, we uh, agree to disagree. Uh, sometimes speakers, it helps sometimes. And yeah, we, we're a little, some of the senior people are a little tougher. You know, I don't mind what you guys say about me. I largely because I don't pay attention. <laughs> I think you're all ridiculous. Well, I'd rather listen to my cat. But anyhow, thank you again to the Truth Brigade. Come okay. again when you guys want to give us an update on what you're up right. to. And thank you for your efforts. And it's now the floor is yours. Uh, you can speak for as uh, long as you like. Generally, you know, I'm not sure what you want to do, but uh, the floor is yours. If you want to re reiterate your presentation or comment on the rebuttals, uh, this is what I was hoping your friend would stick around for because you get the last word. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me. We appreciate the uh, we appreciate the invitation. Um, you know, I you can clearly see how people have very strongly held opinions. And I appreciate the fact that people feel their truth is their truth. Um, it, kind of, it kind of reinforces for me one of the things that we acknowledge, which is don't even bother trying to change the minds of people <laughs> who have strongly held beliefs opposite to yours because nothing you say is going to make a difference. And you guys have certainly reinforced that for me tonight. But I hope some of what we said was useful to you. And I would like to think that all of us care about the world and other people and that we can find some kind of commonality where we can try to make things better. Okay. okay. All right. Anybody else? I'm a... Uh going to uh close with a quick video clip here it's just short oh no tim let's okay go. okay okay i'll just uh it's we're done thank all you all right i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i okay never mind i was gonna play that little bit from that movie play it tim no, you play, don't play it anything. Play no 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 play no, no. We'll, 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 we'll wait till we'll wait till we we'll wait till we're done with the thing um all right i'll stick around after the uh college so we can engage in some rather discussions Otherwise, the College of Complex is adjourned. Candace, if you'd like to stick around, we usually have a good discussion on our Zoom account afterwards. So again, college is By adjourned. By the way, 